What's up everyone, Dr. Jacob Wilson here, the Muscle PhD, and the question of the day is, what is metabolic flexibility, right? Um, a lot of you have heard about it, some know what it is, some might not know what it is, but we're gonna talk about that concept and we're talking about how do I become metabolically flexible, all right? So, in essence, metabolic flexibility, true metabolic flexibility means that um, I can use whatever fuel source that is around efficiently, okay? Uh, give you a, a good story. Um, <clears throat> my friend um, Lawrence Ballinger, okay? Um, we actually did um, a, a program called Project Mass together a while back. Um, we used to be co sponsored by the same company. And, um, but Lawrence is kind of shredded year round. Now, when Lawrence, Lawrence preps for like a bodybuilding show, like he'll go basically, here's how he kind of cuts he'll start off by eating three boxes of Oreos a day, then he'll go down to two, then one, and then when he's coming close to his contest, he has, he'll only eat one sleeve, okay? And this gets him shredded, all right? So, <laughs> but Lawrence can literally go from eating Oreos to switching to a ketogenic diet and being ketosis in a day, okay? So here's an individual who, if you put him on a high fat diet, he uses fat very well, if you put him on a high carb diet with Oreos, he uses carbs very well. That is the perfect picture of pristine metabolic flexibility. If I eat a bunch of carbs, I use them, I don't store them as fat. If I'm fasted, for example, like if, if, if I'm doing fasted cardio, I'm using fat at a super high level, okay? Um, if I switch to a ketogenic diet, I'm right in the mix and I'm using fat at a very high level. If I'm on my low carb day, I'm using fats at a high level, but if I'm on my higher carb day, I'm using those carbs as energy and not storing them as fat, right? Sounds like utopia, right? Okay, how do I create this state of metabolic flexibility and what stops me from being flexible, okay? Well, to do that, we really need to look at a, a clinical situation to where people are not metabolically flexible and, and basically that is people who are insulin resistant or people of type two diabetes, okay? Both of them seem to have this problem, okay? Uh, or people who's genetically, both their parents have type two diabetes and they're that endomorphic person who can't really handle carbs very well. So what happens is this, if you give someone who's insulin resistant or headed toward having type two diabetes or that genetic guy who's not very good at using carbs, say that if you look at fat metabolism and you kind of think of it as a dial, right? Okay. Um, when I'm fasted, fat metabolism should go up, right? So when I'm fasted, fat metabolism should go up, right? If I all of a sudden eat a bag of Oreos or if I eat a bunch of Pop-Tarts, the use of carbohydrates as fuel should skyrocket, okay? I should use it very efficiently. The ultimate case of someone who's uh, insulin resistant, the ultimate case of someone who's not metabolically flexible or your type two diabetics, or people who are insulin resistant, say this is carbohydrate utilization, they eat a bunch of Pop-Tarts, carbohydrate metabolism doesn't go up. They don't use them very well. So what happens, it stays in their blood, blood sugar skyrockets, it keeps staying in their blood. A lot of that blood sugar actually sticks on tissues, um, clogs arteries, um, and um, increases inflammation or gets stored as fat, okay? Now Lawrence eats the carbohydrates, Boom, he uses them, goes shuttles directly in the muscle, he gets a pump, veins pop because he's so insulin sensitive and he's able to go in the gym and crush it, all right? But this person, they can't use carbs, all right? So it gets stored as fat in a large part and causes uh, inflammation. Now that same person, say they haven't eaten for 12 hours. You want them to be using fat at a high level, they don't. Their fat metabolism goes up maybe five, maybe 10%. No bueno, okay? And if they're doing fasted cardio, they're not using much fat either, all right? So how do we actually trigger this? How can I cause my body to start using fat at a higher level if I just don't think I'm metabolically flexible, okay? There's a couple of different ways. One way, we're, remember we're focusing on two different things here, be able to use fat and also be able to use carbohydrates. Now both of those are set on two different principles. One is what we call nutrient programming. The other is what we call um, mitochondrial density, okay? Let's start with nutrient programming. There is a scientist by the name of Molly Bray, 
And Molly Bray's laboratory had this concept that you could program what your body's preferred source of fuel was at the beginning of the day when you wake up based on your what we call circadian rhythms. And that your preferred fuel source would be that based on what you ate in the morning, okay? Irrespective of the calories throughout an entire day. So Molly Bray had two groups. One group had a lower carbohydrate breakfast. The other group had a higher carbohydrate breakfast. Well, um, but remember, total calories and total carbohydrates were the same, okay? One group, low carb first half of the day, higher carb second half, second group, lower, uh, higher carb beginning of the day, then they tapered their carbs off, okay? Guess what happened? The group that started off at lower carb preferentially used fat the remainder of the day. So they preferentially used fat the remainder of the day, and even though their carbs were the same as the other group, they were leaner and had lower body fat than the group that started off higher carbs. Why? Molly Bray posited or suggested that when you start off higher carb, you program your body to be metabolically inflexible, that the only fuel source you can use the rest of the day are carbohydrates, okay? Another friend of mine, Ben Pakolsky, if you look at his, his breakfast when he was competing, and if you remember Generation Iron One, right, when we were talking a lot, his breakfast was literally, he'd take like a pound of like ground beef, of course it was grass fed, ground beef, he cooked that up in like a stick of butter, right? And he'd throw in some vegetables and stuff into that. And that was his breakfast, right? Butter, like ground beef. And he would get shredded doing this, okay? Um, but you can play around. Bacon and eggs can be a good breakfast, you know what I mean? Um, <clears throat> you know, depends on what you like. It could be Greek yogurt with peanut butter, you know what I mean? It all depends on what you like. There's a lot of low carb sources. Now we'll tell you this, at first you will not be used to this, and a lot of guys are used to starting off the day with carbs. You'll be like, oh my God, I'm hungry, I can't think, I can't focus. You'll adapt very rapidly to that low carb, and what you'll end up notice that you're not very hungry the rest of the day, your satiety's up, and in fact, in fact, studies actually show that when you start off with a high carb breakfast, particularly one that has eggs in it, you're more satiated the rest of the day and don't wanna eat as much the rest of the day, okay? Um, so now remember, when I say high fat, I don't mean like the fast food, we're having high fat, high carbs. That's a recipe for disaster, do not do that. It's either high fat or, um, or, or nothing, you know what I mean? So as far as this is concerned. So that's, that's part one, okay? Um, let's talk about part two of this video, okay? Part two, what is the second part or the second half of metabolic flexibility? Remember, in part one, we discussed the fact that um, there are two components to, to metabolic flexibility, um, which is one, nutrient programming, and two, the second part we discussed was mitochondria or mitochondrial density and function. Okay? Remember, metabolic flexibility is your ability to use carbohydrates when you consume them. You use them, they go straight to your muscle, not to fat, and when I have fat, I use that, and I actually, um, or if I'm fasting, I use fat at a high rate. Okay? One, we talked about um, nutrient programming. If I start off with a low carb breakfast and have carbs later in the day, preferably around my workout, if I'm training later in the day, then I will actually use fat at a higher rate throughout the day. And when I use carbs later in the day, I can use them at a more efficient rate, okay? That's called nutrient programming. The second component I talked about was mitochondrial density. Now, uh, a lot of bodybuilders will end up saying, when I just diet down, I just let my diet dial me in, don't do cardio, those individuals oftentimes uh, become not metabolically flexible after doing several times like that because if you're not doing cardio, what happens is you don't increase mitochondria in the muscle. So mitochondria are the key to burning fat at rest. So when you are fasted, you will burn fat proportionally to how much mitochondria is in your muscle. You will, mitochondria also determines how insulin sensitive I am. The more insulin sensitive that I am, the more efficiently I use carbohydrates when I actually eat them, okay? So because of this, to be metabolically flexible, bodybuilders should be doing cardio both in the off season and during contest time. Contest time is usually not a problem. What happens in the off season, they bulk up for several months, they don't do cardio because they're scared that it's gonna make them lose muscle 
and we've, we have a question and answer on cardio, by the way, I, I would refer you to that. But the biggest thing I'm going to talk about is that you need to do cardio in the off season, even if it's only twice a week. And if you're scared of losing muscle, make sure you're doing intervals, right? What, and I'd recommend four to 10, 10 to 30 seconds, all out sprints with maybe one to three minutes rest between sprints. Okay. That's going to be very important for, uh, increasing mitochondria, right? Now, are there ways that you become metabolically inflexible? The answer is yes. Okay. Uh, the number one way is you're combining high fat and high carbs at the same time. If you're combining high fat and high carbs at the same time, studies show immediately become in metabolically inflexible where you're, you can't use carbs very well because you have so much inflammation and that triggers insulin resistance, but also, uh, you can't use fat at rest either because you're so insulin resistant as well. Um, so that's one way. The other thing is if you're endomorphic, for example, and you switch fully to a ketogenic diet. And if you know me, uh, there's a lot of popularity on muscle PhD for, for what we do on ketogenic diet and the research we've done on ketogenic dieting. But if you go keto for a couple years, you'll be metabolically inflexible the other way. You'll use fat very well when you're fast you use fat very well. But when you consume carbohydrates, um, we, our studies have shown, we've actually done a lot of pilot studies, a lot of interesting research. When you consume carbs a high amount, they will spill over. In other words, you won't use carbohydrates very well. And what's interesting about that is that if you're going into a contest and you've been doing keto for like three months, for example, or even four months, when you go to a contest and you carb up really high with say in previous contests, you weren't keto and you carved up on 500 carbs. And now you go into a contest and you carb on 500 carbs, uh, you'll spill over. You'll be bloated and you will definitely store fat. Okay. And there'll be a thin film of fat on your abs. When you go on stage and you go, what happened? Well, you did the same thing you did in your previous contest, but now you're not metabolically flexible because you can't use carbohydrates. Okay. So if you did go into a state of being metabolically inflexible, what I suggest is when you do carb up pre-contest, you might be able to carb up on hundred grams of carbs, 150 max 200. Okay. Um, and it's interesting, like, um, uh, Paul, you guys know, Paul, um, he's, he has a story of this for himself where basically like he actually, um, was low carb, then he carved up too high and he spilled over pre contest. Um, and actually if you, if you put up a picture of Paul contest, you see he's super shredded, right? Still wearing the glasses pre contest, but he shredded as hell. Um, but he did spill over, um, one time. So make sure you're very cautious of that. One way to stay metabolically flexible is carbohydrate cycling. We've talked about that a lot. Nutrient programming, making sure you're doing cardio as well. Um, or if you're doing a keto diet after a few months, maybe having a, a few carb meals a week could help out. Thank you so much, guys. I will see you next time.